Hello and happy 2019 everyone. I just thought I'd come on and do my end of year review for 2018 and share with you my plans for 2019 as well. So I have a couple of finishes since the last time I saw you. I've been stitching pretty much non-stop the last couple of weeks to squeeze in some more finishes. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to share those with you. Um, as well as the projects I finished earlier in the year. So I'll do that too. Okay, see you in a sec. All right, so what I've decided to do is go from my oldest to newest finishes. So the first thing I finished this year was the Soda Stitch Sweet Bears, which is quite tall. It's about 21 inches tall on 18 count Devosa Even Weave by Swigart. I'm going to start at the top and just go from shelf to shelf to show you the details. And this was a really enjoyable stitch. I know there's a lot of back stitch in the soda stitch pieces that puts some people off, but it's not difficult back stitch. There's no fractionals, it's just easy, straightforward. Um, stitching and I love I really loved stitching this because of all the different colours and details and so many different elements um, throughout it so I think it because of all those elements it keeps you interested all the way through so I think this is the biggest piece that I've stitched um, so far and I do have a few other soda stitch patterns um, I have pasta time kitted up which I may do in 2019 um, I guess I'll just have to wait and see because I, I change my mind so often on what I want to stitch next so there isn't really going to be a, a solid plan as such for this year this is my favourite part, this blueberry pie, which I think I said on the video when this one was finished. is so cute. I just love the colours on it. And that was the last tier on that cake stand. And it is an extended version. I found it online um, after buying the original pattern. So I think I said at the time where I'd finished this, I didn't want to share it because the person who had charted the last two shelves, I think it is, the two last two tiers, they had shared the whole pattern, so yeah, I can't share that. And to be honest, I don't even know where the link is anymore. Um, but I'm sure you could find it if you really wanted to. So that's the first piece that I finished. And then the next one was the frog pile. This is a design works kit. I have the package here. Um, it is 11 by 16. It comes with 14 count Ada, which I changed for 28 count even wave. And again, this was a really easy stitch. The design works floss can be a little tricky to work with it does tend to get a little tangled sometimes um, but they are cheaper kits it's just not as nice as DMC or Anchor I really enjoy working with Anchor as well so that is that one I love that frog in the middle with the yellow and the orange He's really cute, but the green ones were nice to do as well. Well, they all were. Again, it's it's one with different elements and different colours. So, And then, this is the piece that I showed on my last video. This is definitely my favourite finish of the year. I love this design. This is stitched with Anchor Floss. It was in a cross-stitch collection magazine, I think. August 2009, if I remember correctly. And it's just gorgeous. I love the colours, I love the elements. 
it was challenging um, in places for the back stitch that little B there um, was quite challenging and then I talked last on my last video about the challenges of these parts the rosebuds and that leaf because of the fractional back stitches but it's so worth it I think this is an absolutely beautiful design and I can't wait to get this one framed love the honeysuckle this had my first French knots in it and uh, <laughs> I think like a lot of other people I battle with those yeah they're not my favourite but I didn't feel in this piece that beads were a good alternative the foxglove and this butterfly are one of my favourite elements on here the butterfly I thought if you look at the back stitch on there I thought it was going to be a bit of a nightmare but it was actually okay it wasn't as bad as what I was expecting I think it was after doing the rose leaves I just expected it to be pretty horrendous but no it was it was good it was well it was fine for back stitch um, the the writing wasn't that easy either to be honest um, but overall I I just I love the piece and even though there were challenges with it um, definitely worth it I'm trying to get an overall view but yeah not doing very well with that okay so that was the one that I was desperately wanting to finish um, for this year then after that um, I picked up this kit from Luca S. These are anchor flosses again. This is Lulu um, stitched on 16 count grey Ada and I used everything in the kit. I didn't change anything out and I finished it. So this is Lulu. Really easy stitch. The chart um, was really large and easy to follow. It was a great chart. I thought she turned out really cute. I do have the companion piece that goes with this um, lolly. So I hope to get that one done at some point and then frame them both together. So that was a new start and new finish and I think I only worked on her for a day, um, a day, that'd be, that'd be fast, a week. Um, I finished on Christmas Day. And then one more finish, I picked up this one. This is a Dimensions Gold Collection Petite um, called Hydrangea in Bloom. They measure five by seven. There is quite a lot of work in these and I hadn't done very much. I'd done, I think, the background at the top, which is half stitches, and I just started on the flowers and that was it. However, I was determined to have another finish, so... I finished this yesterday, New Year's Eve, so very last minute. There's a hoop mark on it, um, which I hope will disappear when I um, wash it. But this was um, an extra little finish for the year. It was a lot of <laughs> a lot of work to get this one done. There's, um, it might only be 5 by 7 but it's full coverage and there's an awful lot of back stitching um, particularly here so all those little cracks are back stitched it's back stitched all around um, and then the outline of the the textured pattern on the pot is back stitched 
the leaves are back stitched around the edge and then couched the lighter green is couched that's actually the first time I've done couching but I found it quite easy the petals obviously are back stitched there's three different colors of floss for the back stitching there's a um, dark violet there's a few bit, bits of white on there and then on the dark petals it's a navy blue colour and then obviously adding the beads so although there's um, a fair bit of background that's half stitches there's also quite a lot of intense work particularly figuring out where that back stitching goes on the petals once you've stitched that mass of purple and blue because it's very similar looking so do need to concentrate a little bit but I'm very pleased with how it looks and that is everything that I've achieved this year not as much as I would have hoped but I think considering the size of some of the pieces and how much time I've had that's not not too bad for the year it's definitely better than last year I've got five finishes this year compared to two last year and I'm not sure how many I'll get next year because I've got two, these two are smaller pieces. I don't really have so many smaller pieces in my collection. So maybe it won't be as many finishes next year because they'll be larger. Um, yeah, okay, let's have a look at the pieces that didn't get much love and need to be carried through into 2019. So the first piece that I haven't finished that will be carried through to next year is this one here. It is the Snowmen Cocoa Ornaments by Designworks. I did manage to get two of them completed and I talked about the fact that I didn't have enough of the back stitching thread to complete these. Um, so I put it down, it's been in the naughty corner since then, so I, you know I should be able to find something that's, that's okay, I'm just disappointed that they're not all going to be exactly the same. Um, someone did comment and say oh don't design works use DMC thread, um, and from what I can gather they use some, they do list DMC numbers with um, some of the kits. I don't think they do with this one, otherwise I wouldn't have been searching through to try and find a match. But I know Frog Pile definitely had DMC numbers with it. Um, so I think if I think they just use DMC for some threads and not others because you can kind of tell in the quality that some are not DMC. Most are not DMC. But anyway, I haven't found an exact match. I do have the DMC floss chart with the actual floss and I also have an anchor one and there was no exact match on either of those so I'm just going to have to find something similar um, the next one or well, the next two are things that have not been touched or worked on at all so this one is the uh, Dimensions 12 Days of Christmas and I'll show you where I'm at on it I've just done the first two days um, my intention was this year, this past year, um, yeah, 2018 and I believe 2017, my intention was to do one of these a month and it will be done for Christmas. So for whatever reason, um, I didn't do that, it didn't happen. Um, it would be nice to have it finished for next year. In fact, all the pieces that I'm going to show you now it would be nice to have finished by the end of 2019 but it depends I guess on uh, <laughs> whether I start anything else and I'm sure I will uh, this one here has got a chart on it so I'll just remove that not that I think you can stitch it from that tiny little bit of chart but uh, this again is a design works one. It's called Wreath of All Seasons, I believe. Um, but that is all I've done. Again, this one has not been touched all year. Here is what it will look like. 
and I still love, you know, I love both of these pieces that I've not touched, but um, I've just been doing other projects. Then this one here has been touched, but only just. This is Mirabilia, My Lady's Garden, and it is quite big um, what it is on this frame. The main reason that I stopped working on her was the metallic thread, which is a bit of a nightmare to work with. And I don't know whether the camera will pick up the metallic or not, but the border all the way around has the metallic and this top border is not finished um, this this section from here to here is only half stitches and I'm going to finish it I picked it up yesterday after I'd finished the little dimensions hydrangea and I was determined before I start anything else because I do want to do new year new start I have to have that metallic border done as a minimum. So I put two strands in, um, one last night, in fact I only did half of it last night and then um, I've put in, finished that off this morning and I'm putting another strand so there's literally just that bit at the end to go. But then there's the whole of the gate, you can just see the beginning of the gate there, that is also in that metallic thread and it's a blend of three different threads in fact because I've been working on it I have them here they are these two here they do look I mean they look so pretty together but there's two it's two strands of this and one of this um, that is blending filament 011HL anybody's interested in that um, and this is blending filament 018 but they are a complete nightmare to work with they slip and slide all over they don't want to lie properly um, they shred they twist they tangle they're slippery they're a nightmare to thread they're a nightmare to do your first stitch they're a nightmare to finish off <laughs> I just don't like them and that is why that piece um, has barely been worked on. The only other thing I did, I picked it up last night and I already had thread in my needle so I finished off the thread which was just regular DMC and I was like I really like stitching this, maybe I won't do a new start, maybe I'll just do this and then I switched to that metallic and I was like yeah that's why I don't want to do this. Um, if you haven't seen what she looks like, she is an older one but you can see how big that gate is and some of it is with the flowers so I think you need to stitch the flowers first and then stitch like there's back stitched parts of the gates that go over the flowers you can see that so I think that's going to be a whole new nightmare of its own <laughs> um, but I really love the pattern and I love her dress and the colours and I do want to get it finished and I feel guilty starting anything else when or guilty starting another lady or mirabilia when she is sat there however my new start is most likely going to be another lady so I'm going to go and get that now and go and get a few more projects that I think I'm going to start this year and hopefully get some finishes on um, but as I've said earlier in the video and I said in my last video I changed my mind so many times about what what I want to stitch um, but you know it's nice just to share my ideas for now and we'll see how the year goes so I'll go and get those and get back to you so can you believe I missed showing you one of my favorite whips at the moment my margarine bastin I haven't worked on this for a good while but I've done 
all of this this year because this it was um it was my new year new start last year i would have liked to have finished it but um i got a little burnt out on it and then i kind of never went back to it but it's about just over half done if you want to see um someone who has finished it this year if you go and visit um christine whose channel is called calico hers looks absolutely gorgeous and i saw i saw her finish first on instagram and then i saw it in her um floss tube video and it makes me feel a little bit guilty that mine is just sitting here and doing nothing right now but um i love working on this piece it's an easy stitch it's um definitely something i want hanging in my house um i i totally love the margin baston pieces i think um maybe i shared on my very first floss tube or maybe i never i can't remember but um margin baston kits were something that i had a few of about 20 years ago that was one of them when i was first doing cross stitching and then i got into mixed media art and didn't think I'd ever go back to cross stitch, so I sold them. And uh, oh, talk about regret, because I'd had to import them from the States in the first place, because I think even 20 years ago they were hard to get hold of, and now they're, I think, discontinued, although I keep seeing them pop up in places, so I'm not so sure, particularly that Four Seasons one. I've seen that quite a lot um, since I got it. So yeah, I I wish I'd kept them. There are a few patterns, and I know, I know I still haven't done a pattern share. That um, I said I'd share my stash. Oh, at least a year ago, possibly more than that. Um, I'll get round to that one day. One day I'll get round to. It. I might do it soon. I you never know. Um, anyway, so that's my last whip. That's everything, um, and that's plenty for me to work on. I think I started the year with six and. Have I got six again still? I'm not sure. I'm sure you can count them for yourself. Um, I don't really like too many more than that because I feel like I'm not getting any progress. So that's about right for me. I don't want any more really. Although my new year, new start is going to be this. So this is Passion Recamo, The Fairy Guide or Evening Star. I bought this, I was looking at the pattern this morning just to get the stitch count and apparently I bought it in July 2017 because when you, I bought it as a digital download but the date that you buy it is printed on it um, and it's been kitted up pretty much since then so the fabric, I bought the same fabric um, that's used on the model stitch that's showing like oh, that's a bit better I think as always fabric doesn't show that brilliantly but that's not too bad it's a, possibly a touch darker than what it's showing I think that's maybe a better representation but I just thought she looks so nice on there and she's very heavily beaded um, there are three three packets of these little Mill Hill double O two five two lilac. They're kind of like an iridescent lilac. So there's three packets of those and then there's a packet of gold beads as well. The 02011. So she's going to look really nice with lilacs and lilacs, purples, violets, golds, and then there's some aqua colours as well. And then obviously a light is uh, yellow. And then there's all these petite treasure braids that, <laughs> that go on her. So I can't wait to um, start her. I just feel guilty that I've still got that Mirabilia one sitting there 
<laughs> waiting for the metallic border to get done. But hopefully I'll work on both. So that's a definite start. I'm going to start that today. It's um, I probably won't get much done. It's gone midday now because I've been faffing around with different things as you do. Then the other things, I've just grabbed a pile of stuff that I've been thinking about the last few days because I wasn't dead set on starting that. Although for like the past six months, I've, I've been, yeah, that's going to be my start for 2019. And then last night I was like, oh, I could do this or I could do this. And you start sort of thinking about all your supplies um, that you have. So other possibilities for the year, and I'm fairly confident that I've shared all these before, so you wouldn't have seen them. But this is another anchor one. No doubt we'll have the uh, Nightmare back stitch. I kitted this up. These are the flosses that I've just taken out. I kitted that up last year, I think. I'm still undecided about the fabric. I did buy fabric for it, and then um, if that's got as much fractional back stitch as the anchor one that I've just done, there's no way I'm going to do it on Ada, which is what I got. I got 18 count Ada, I think. So this one here. It's another possibility of a start this year. Again, this is an anchor one. It's a lavender sampler. And it's all the kind of elements I love. The little gardening tools and seeds and seed packets. So that one, again, I've got the floss for. Um, I've probably got some fabric. I'll probably just do that on a 28 count even weave. So there's those two and then this one as well, another anchor. Can you tell I like anchor designs? This one I got the floss for, in fact I've got the fabric in here as well, um, last year. It was going to be a start for last year but I never got around to it so I might do that one this year. But it'll probably be one out of those three because they're three anchor designs so maybe I don't know I don't know it depends how the mood takes me and then I just mentioned before past the time soda stitch um, and I really like the one here on the brown fabric and I tried to ask the designer what colour it was and she said it was what did she say I think she said it was dark beige and I'm not sure that that's actually stitched at all and it's just sort of a mock-up but the one next to it looks stitched anyway I, I don't have any dark beige fabric and I don't know of a dark beige colour by Zweigart or any of the main manufacturers so not that I can buy anyway so I'm deciding between this one here which is um, light taupe or I also have um, vintage country mocha so it'll be one of those two um, and I keep taking out the fabric and replacing it with the other one and changing my mind about it but um, so I wouldn't mind starting that one but we'll see I think I like the soda stitch because they're fun to stitch on then <laughs> this is the one last night <laughs> Or this morning, I can't remember which. I was like, oh, you know what? I really want to stitch those little mice. So again, it's anchor, and this has got Ada in, but I do prefer even weave, so I might switch out because there's a lot of white area, and I don't like to see the holes so big. Um, yeah, it's on 14 counts, so I'll probably switch out for some 28 count even weave. Um, but yeah that was in my head yesterday and I'm not going to start all these by the way they're just ones that I've been thinking of recently and this one I saw somebody stitch this on Instagram and as soon as I saw it I was like I have that I really want to start it so that's a possibility until I see something else that somebody stitched and wants to do that one obviously then <laughs> this one is also high up on the list. It's a Lanark kit called Apple Blossom and 
the companion piece, which is fuchsias. So maybe one of those might get started. And I, <laughs> this is a bit of a ridiculous pile, but whatever. This one, I've never done a Teresa Wensler. I've got a couple. I really like this. It's, I want to put this piece in my bedroom, so that's another possibility. It's funny though, I always thought this kit, I had this out the other day, um, I thought that was stitched on white or antique white. And I turned it over because it is a kit and you probably can't tell that. But it's a cream, it looks more ivory there. Um, well, I suppose it is ivory, like a dark ivory to cream, even with. And um, yeah, I just always thought that looks like white to me. So I had to, because I bought this as a kit that was open, like it was opened already, it was from eBay. I was like, oh, I wonder if they swapped the fabric out, but apparently no, it is on um, a cream coloured fabric. So that was news to me. Then these two are Russian kits and the company is called Golden Hands. I wouldn't mind getting one of these done this year. So there's that one that's the Phasalis with the snow on. And there's this one, which is the horse chestnuts. So maybe one of those. And then dimensions kits. <laughs> Can you imagine if I could stitch all this in a year? That would be awesome, but I'm, no, not going to happen. So the ones that I've been thinking about most recently. This one, definitely. I really like this. It's got like a mint colour fabric, which I'd love it to be even with. Um, I might try and dye something myself that colour, which obviously the camera's not really going to show it. Um, but we'll see. Otherwise, I'm just going to use the kit fabric because it does feel very wasteful to not use kit fabric all the time. And um, this one, the mason jar lineup, I think about on and off all the time. But I think. I don't know. Yeah, so I'll get to them eventually. This one, uh, roses on white chair. Every time I see this one, I want to stitch it. So that is a possibility. And this one as well. Now I was going to start this one. This is called Kitty Litter, by the way. I was going to start that in two thousand eighteen, and. I lost my cat this year. She was 15 years old. She was very poorly when she died. Um, and it's horrible to look, I know like, you're not interested if it's not your pet, I get that. <laughs> but when it is your pet, it's like, it's, I don't know, my little cat was part of my family. So, and I live alone, I don't live with my family. So it was a huge, it was a huge loss. And, um, have a pet for that amount of years and then they're not there anymore it's um it's heartbreaking so i couldn't bring myself to start this kit um but i, I do want to stitch it it's absolutely gorgeous so we'll, we'll see um whether i can stitch that this year and there's two more not that i'm buying anything but there's two more um cat designs the I think they're by RTO there, there's a little series called Among Black Cats and my cat you can see her in one of my videos she's laid this used to be her little blanket and she was laid at the back of one of my videos um not the last one not the one before that but the one before that <laughs> um I don't know when that was. It well, it was before July because she passed away in July. Um, but anyway, to get back to what I was saying, these two kits from RTO, the Among the Black Cat kits, um, remind me of her. She was a black and white cat, mostly black, and I want to get those before they disappear because they remind me of her. And I don't think I'll get another cat. To be honest, I don't think I can 
deal with that heartbreak again. So it's just me now. <laughs> um, I don't know. I might one day I see little kittens like those little cuties and just think about getting another one. But yeah, it's um, it's part of life, isn't it? Something you deal with. I think I get. I think I got more upset about my cat dying than um, human beings. <laughs> That's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think I'll end it there. So plans are finish everything that's been started prior to this year. My new year, new start is my Passio Macamo. And then choose something, probably from the ones that I've just shown you. Who knows, I could change my mind by then. And I will at some point do the pattern stash video. This year, this year, it will definitely be this year. Um, okay, that's everything. So, Happy New Year. I hope everyone has a great 2019. Um, I'm hoping my year's going to be better than last year. It was not the best year for me. Um, it can't be any worse. So, I'm really embracing the new year. Looking forward to everything that it has to share, new opportunities, lots of stitching, lots of creativity. Alright, I will see you all again soon. Bye bye.